So in today's writing vlog, we're gonna be attempting to write 5,000 words in a single weekend. I'm currently in the process of drafting my adult romanticy novel, which I've been nicknaming Project The Wall. This is my first full book project that I've worked on, as well as what I'm hoping to be my self-publishing debut. And I've been documenting the process of working on this book through my vlog series, The Rough Draft Vlogs. This is episode five, and we are kind of sort of almost in the home stretch. That being said, my March writing has been slow. I have a 10,000 word goal for the month of March. It's the same goal that I had in the month of January and February, and I hit it in both of those months. But in March, it's currently March 22nd, it's Friday, and I have only written 1,000 words. I've been using this circle system to track my word count progress, and I've really been loving it. But as you can imagine, I should be a lot further along in my 10K word goal, considering it's literally March 22nd. I only have two weekends left in the month, and I typically do only write on the weekends. I fully considered not even trying for this monthly goal at this point because of how far behind I fell. And honestly, because I think that I could finish this book in April, regardless of how much I write in March. We're that close to the end at this point, which is very exciting. But but I've stuck to all of my writing goals so far this year. I hit my goal for January and February and I wanna keep that pattern going. I wanna motivate myself to continue sticking to my ideal writing schedule for the rest of the year. So we're gonna try to hit the 10K and trying to do a 5K weekend is a big part of that. I know that 5,000 words in a weekend is doable because this is the pace that I was working at during NaNoWriMo. I was hitting 5,000 words like every weekend during NaNo. So I know I can do it. It's definitely more than I've been used to doing in the last couple months, but I'm kind of excited for the challenge. and also. Also, I've been craving it. I haven't written much in weeks, so I really have that built up like excitement and desire to get back to the project. I miss my characters, I miss this story, so I'm feeling very motivated to really dive in this weekend. So we're gonna be trying to write 5K words. It's gonna be kind of more of an extended weekend because I'm gonna start tonight. It's Friday night. I'm feeling really excited. I wanna show you guys where I'm at in my sticky notes outline. So if you did not see my Panzer Tries plotting vlog, I basically created a sticky note outline on my mirror of essentially part three of this book, the book is broken into three parts based on which location the characters are in. So I broke down part three in sticky notes and I wanna show you guys where we're at so you can get a sense of like how far into the story are we really? Okay, let's let's go do that right now. Before we do that though, quick note that I did create a writing Instagram. So you can now follow me at Brielle is writing on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting real-time writing updates, more information about my project and eventually my books when I start publishing and just more behind the scenes stuff. So if you you want to follow me over there it is Brielle is writing and you can go check it out okay so this is the outline that we worked on in my Panzer Tries plotting vlog yeah we broke it down into three sections pink light blue dark blue we are all the way down here so we are like home stretch like last one and a half rows of sticky notes that's how close we are to the ending of this book which is why I say I feel like we are on track to finish this book with Camp Nano April how many words I'll actually have to write to finish that's something that we're gonna have to decide when we get a little bit closer to the end of the month, but that's where we're at. So we're all the way down here. They've reached the destination. I mentioned before that it was a journey book. So they're already at the destination like city that they're going to. And now they're dealing with the climax, the main conflict, lowest low point where everything's fallen apart and things are looking pretty desolate. That's where my characters are at right now. They're about to start fist fighting their way out of there. So it's a really exciting part of the book and every single scene I have left to write, I'm excited to write for one reason or another. I also just feel like I've been thinking about my characters, specifically my love interest, a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Like just thinking about him. Thinking about him in different stages of the plot of the first book. I'm starting to have very preliminary ideas about the second book, which I'm really excited for because I am planning for this to be a duology and the sequel has been a little bit mysterious to me up until this point. So starting to have ideas for that, which I'm really grateful for because hopefully that can inform things that I need to set up in book one. Okay, so the plan for tonight is I'm gonna take myself obviously on a writing date. You guys know, I swear by the writing dates. They make me so productive, I love them. So we're gonna go down to a cafe that I've really been loving, get a little smoothie, maybe a little croissant if I'm feeling crazy. And I'm trying to like get in the zone. I'm going alone, I'm gonna spend as much time there as I could possibly desire in my little heart and soul and just really hope to like get deep into the zone. One thing that I've been very guilty of lately is when I do the little reread that I have to do to get myself back in the story, you know, I'll read the last chapter or so. I've been editing, which I need to not do. I've been line editing to make the writing prettier. We're not doing that today. No editing will take place. Pure draft mode, no self-editing either. I really wanna get into that pure 
creative flow where I'm not self-censoring, I'm not self-editing, I'm just letting the words come out as they're meant to come out. Cause that is honestly when I get the best, most fully fledged scenes and lines anyway. That's when the writing does turn out the prettiest is when I try to turn off that part of my brain that's trying to make the writing pretty. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go on a cute little writing day. Saturday. I just went for a massage and I have never felt better. I felt so calm, so zen. I've been trying to heal some stuff going on with my body and that was just like the best thing I could have done. I'm going back for another one literally on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, so good morning. It is now maybe like 10, 15 a.m. Last night's writing session went really well. I was very much in flow and really not self-editing, which felt great because that has not been happening lately. I wrote just under a thousand words, maybe 800, 900 words, which is pretty decent. That does still leave like over 4,000 words for me to do in the next three days but I think it's doable um we're gonna go do a little writing session up at my favorite cafe get a little croissant hopefully write a good thousand words or so I don't have a ton of time because I have lunch plans with a friend but my friend Dustin is coming over later and we're gonna do like a productive date vibe for the afternoon and then maybe see a movie tonight so hopefully we should get to more writing this afternoon as well. This project and working on this project is the main task I wanna work on this weekend. So I'm gonna be diving all of my productive time into the book. Let's talk a little bit about what I wrote yesterday. So we're at a very interesting part in the plot. I mentioned this on my Instagram story yesterday, but I just introduced what I would classify as a periphery love interest. I don't wanna give away too much detail, but essentially our main character is going to essentially use this man. <laughs> Take advantage of him a little bit to get some information that she needs. And I've actually decided that I think he's going to play a pretty major role in book two as well. So I'm starting to get ideas for how he could fall into the dynamic for book two, which is really exciting. So I'm really excited actually to play with his character. He's interesting and they're gonna have a bit of a romantic moment. This is gonna give us a lot of information about this new place that they're in, as well as how things kind of work around there. And so he's gonna be a great source of information while also being an interesting character. So today we're going to continue writing some critical scenes between her and this secondary love interest as well as her trying to get them out of the hole that they're in <laughs> essentially. Um, Raya is really taking the lead on trying to get them out of their situation which is fun to write. I did also get a question asking if there's any sort of like creative liberties I'm taking with the structure of this book and one thing that I did do that I still need to figure out and I'm gonna depend on my beta readers for feedback on this is I have a chapter from Varen's perspective. I think it's important for us to see what happens in that chapter because our FMC and MMC are separated in this moment. And this is really a moment I wanted to experience from Varen's point of view, but it's the only chapter in Varen's point of view. And I have it currently at the beginning of part three in hopes that that can make it seem a little less unnatural. And originally I was playing around with the idea of switching back and forth between Varen and Rhea for part three, but I don't actually think I wanna do that. So I don't know if it's weird to just have that one chapter in his POV. There is like a memory in his POV earlier in the book, but that's about it. But I think it could work, especially because I want to do book two in dual POV, potentially. So anyway, that's that. Let's go do a quick little writing date at the cafe. So as you can see, it was raining on my way to the coffee shop, but honestly, the rainy day vibes was perfect for a productive little coffee shop writing session. So we cozied up with my Gruyere in time croissant and the project. I was working on chapter 37 during this session and actually was able to finish it. This was a very critical scene in the ending of the book, so 
It was really an intense undertaking, but I'm really happy with the progress I made on it. And of course, I'm always excited when I get to fill in some of my little circles. So we got to check off chapter 37, as well as 3,000 words for the month. And then later that evening, me and my friend Dustin went to this cute little boba spot, got some boba, and both did some work. He was working on a visualizer for a song he has coming out. I was working on the book, obviously. I had brown sugar boba, and this session was crazy productive. I quite literally wrote over 2,000 words just in this evening boba shop writing session, and honestly, this entire weekend, I was in the flow. It was crazy. All right, it is time for the Q&A segment of this video. So we have a couple questions today that I'm really interested to answer. The first one is, what helps you make your characters believable and feel real? Now, the first thing I'll say is that this is not easy. I wrestle with dialogue a lot. I think trying to phrase things believably, but still in a way that sounds pretty is probably one of the hardest aspects of writing in my mind. Dialogue is not easy and trying to make your characters feel real and believable is not easy either. A few things that have helped me though, the first thing I'll say is visualizing scenes and visualizing my characters actually speaking is something that really helps me to narrow down what would and wouldn't sound natural coming out of their mouth. And the only way that I am able to visualize them is because I have character reference photos. So those have proved way more instrumental to my writing process than I could have even imagined. Being able to look up at those photos, I now have them hanging above my desk. Being able to look up at them and use them to picture my characters in the scene has been monumental, transformative. Can't say enough how much that has helped me when it comes to writing dialogue and believable character movements and actions. So that's been huge. I also just think it's important for your characters to have layers and to understand that this is something that will also come with time because I think it's very normal when you start off a draft for you not to have the character voices nailed yet and honestly not to have them quite figured out until maybe the end of the draft or even when you're revising. I think that's super normal. I've definitely experienced that. I know my characters a lot better now than I did when I started this draft because not only are pieces of their backstory and stuff falling into place but the more time you spend with them just writing them, seeing them on the page, seeing what they do, the more clear you get on what is and isn't something this character would do. So for example, my love interest, Varen, it's a lot easier for me now to be like, write a piece of dialogue and be like, oh God, no, that does not sound like him or that's not what he would say. And that's not to say that all of his lines come immediately, but it is easier for me to filter out what is and isn't aligned with his character now that I know him better. And the only way that I've got to know him was through spending time with him. So I think viewing your relationship with your characters as that, as a relationship and something where you need to get to know them through the writing process helps a lot and yeah just giving them layers you know how has their backstory affected them what does that change about how they view the world view themselves view the people in their lives how do certain biases that they have or certain circumstances that they've been through affect how they view the people in their lives and interact with the world for example i feel like it's easiest for me to give an example so my main character raya is very jaded at the beginning of this book she has a pretty substantial character arc she starts off very depressed very jaded cynical doesn't have faith in anyone or anything at the this point like hopeless being that's how she starts off in the book and that is very much informed by how she grew up the things that she's seen and experienced and the way that the world has beat the hope out of her right and we start to finally see towards the end of this book her coming out of that dark cloud and having hope again so having those things in mind about her character it's going to impact how she speaks to the other characters. It's going to impact her first impressions of them. And honestly, how negatively she views that love interest at the beginning as well. For our male main character, Varen, he grew up as the son of the ruler, who's like the evil <laughs> head of the country they're in. So his situation has a ton of factors going into it. On the one hand, he's essentially a prince. He's the ruler's son. They don't use the word prince in the book, but he's a prince. So he has privilege. He has resources. He grew up in sort of a pampered way. But at the same time, he was the least liked son of his father. His brothers have always been better, faster, stronger. He is essentially the runt of the pack. And also he's been stripped away from a lot of those privileges and his autonomy by his father. So that influences the way that he approaches everything in his life that makes him hungry for control and power in the sense of how he wants to impact things he wants to make a difference he wants to no longer be in the shadows so i hope that those like kind of psychological analyses of my characters give you a little bit of inspiration for how you could go about thinking about who your character is and how what they do is impacted by their circumstances and the things they've experienced and also just the type of person they are are they an optimist a pessimist a realist these are the sorts of things that you can start to think about 
yourself. And again, I just want to stress that I did not know these things before I went into the draft. And I think if I had tried to write these things down on paper before I went into the draft, it would have felt, at least for me, a lot more forced and less organic. I truly feel like I got to know them through drafting. So I believe this question was paired with something along the lines of I'm having a hard time crafting my characters. This gives me the idea that you're maybe in your brainstorming phase and you're getting caught up on not knowing your characters well. I'm going to go ahead and say dive into the project. If you're that stuck, you will get to know them through drafting. I strongly believe that. So our next question is how do you write about affection and how do your current OCs demonstrate and display affection? I thought this question was fascinating and it made me think in a way that I haven't. I guess we're really diving into the psychology of my OCs. OCs. OCs stands for original character, if you do not know. And I'm just saying that because I didn't know until after I've heard it several times. So it's talking about my characters. Writing affection is tricky because I feel like with romance and just affection in general, it has to be a fair amount of it through subtext and through the character's actions and not necessarily huge displays of affection, huge professions of love. Though I do think if that is earned and it's a slow burn, a profession of love can hit. And there is sort of a profession of love though indirectly in my current whip. In terms of how my characters display affection, this actually really got me thinking. So for Varen, I would say he displays affection through trying to help people. And this very much ties into what he wants and that is to have an impact on the world around him, to affect other people, to affect things. So he shows affection basically by trying to help you, showing through pretty intense actions, how he feels about you. He's a very impulsive guy, <laughs> but also, I've noticed he likes to push people. He likes to push the people he believes in and try and push them to be the best versions of themselves. Kind of push their buttons a little bit too to get reactions out of them or to make them feel something. I feel like he's like very much that. He wants more out of you. Like he wants to pull things out of you, which I think is really cool. And I didn't quite realize that until I got this question. And that's really gonna inform my portrayal of him in the future too. So thank you for asking this. In terms of Rhea, I had a little bit of a harder time coming up with an answer to this. And I think it's because as I mentioned earlier, she's a very cynical, character to start off. She struggles a lot with affection. She passes quite a bit of judgment even on the closest people to her and that is because of her circumstances. I don't think it's a moral flaw of hers. I think at her core she's a loving person. So yeah I think she's a little bit less obvious with her feelings not only externally but even to herself. She definitely has I guess you would say the realization of her feelings later than the MMC does in terms of the romance and does not display it as openly is much more resistant to acknowledging those feelings but I feel like you can see sometimes in her internal monologue the admiration she has for people and that's kind of how her affection manifests sometimes it even hinges on jealousy but yeah she's definitely an admirer she sees things in other people that she wishes she had and part of that is her insecurity too but when it actually comes down to the romance I would say she's somewhat bold she takes a little bit of the lead in some of the more romantic key scenes more so than Varen because Raya has not been as jaded romantically as Varen has and I don't want to spoil that reveal but Varen has been jaded romantically so he's a little bit more hesitant to actually like get things rolling he clearly wants to and he lays the groundwork if you will but Raya is kind of the one to take the lead in those moments and you really can tell in those moments that she's interested in him almost despite herself, you know? This was a very interesting chat. I'm gonna cut it off here because I feel like we deep dived into those way more than I was anticipating too. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this little chat about my OCs and their psychology and how I'm thinking about them. All of this is still very much something I'm trying to figure out, still getting to know my FMC quite a bit as well and who she's gonna be beyond how she starts off because I want her to have a substantial character arc. And I think the biggest thing she gains in this book, honestly, is agency. Because at the beginning, she doesn't have much to live for. She doesn't care. She's kind of resigned. And she kind of finds that within herself. She finds that spark. She finds that motivation. And she learns how to alchemize her feelings about her situation into action. So that's her big, her big moment. I hope I kept all this vague enough to not be super spoilery. I think I did. But this is much more about their internal, internal journeys versus the actual circumstances going on. So back to the rest of the video. Good morning. Happy Sunday. We're going to keep this update short and sweet because I really have to go. <laughs> but I cannot freaking believe how productive of a writing day we had yesterday. I wrote over 3,000 words. That's crazy. I can't remember the last time that happened. I'm really in the flow on the scenes that I'm working on. So we're gonna try to keep it going today. I only have, I think less than a thousand words left to hit the 5K goal that I had for this weekend, which is nuts because I felt like that was ambitious. I'm feeling really good about that. I'm about to go to some cute 
bookstores in Culver City with my friend Mick. She's gonna show me some bookstores that she loves, including a romance only bookstore called The Ripped Bodice. So I'm gonna take you guys along for that and I'm hoping to get a little bit of inspiration. And then we're gonna plan to write at the second bookstore we go to. So they have like a little writing or sitting area, I guess. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna down some very quick breakfast and then head over there to see Mick and hopefully keep the productive vibes going. Feeling really, really good about the progress we're making and excited to keep going into the project because I dropped off in the middle of a scene. I feel like it'll be very easy for me to pick it back up and finish that chapter today, honestly. update to close off this video. So had a super productive writing session with my friend Mick at the bookstore cafe combination place. I definitely want to go back there. It was such an inspiring vibe. I loved that there was a bookstore right there so you could like browse the books and then work on your book. I don't know, I think it was a writer's like perfect environment, but at the second location, I did buy a craft book and this is my first ever craft book. So this feels really exciting. I got Save the Cat Writes a Novel, which I've heard so much about and I feel like this is just a great place to start in terms of craft books. It looks like it has a lot of examples, so I'm really excited to dive into this and hopefully get through it before I really start revising so that I can use any tidbits that I learn here when I go ahead and and work on the structure and flow of my project. So I'm really excited to have bought this. And my friend Mick bought Story Genius, which I believe is talking a little bit more about like outlining and brainstorming techniques. And we're going to eventually swap so that we can read read the other book. We're gonna like borrow them from each other. So I'm really excited. I definitely wanna start reading and collecting more craft books that can hopefully help me to keep improving my storytelling. But yeah, we wrote a little bit under a thousand words today. I think we wrote like seven or 800 words. We wrote a part of the book that I've honestly been looking forward to and that was probably the most excited I was about a part of this third section of the book. This is probably the last scene that I would say I was like really looking looking forward to writing, although I'm still a fan of the scenes that are to come. But yeah, I think we've officially broken past 66,000 words in the manuscript. It's a full length book. It's a full length book at this point. And I'm feeling really motivated to finish this draft. So I think this book is going to be done in the next few weeks, which is crazy. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this installment of the Rough Draft Vlogs. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I do have a Ko-fi page where you can buy me a virtual coffee. Really appreciate it if that is something that you're interested in doing. Let me know down in the comments how your projects are going, what you're working on, on. Also, would you guys want me to host some writing sprints during Camp Nano? I could totally see you doing that. All right, bye.